Today's lesson is how to use ratio tables to multiply decimals. Let's take the problem 49 and 2 tenths times 3. Now before we dive in, what do we need to do? Estimate. Here's a very quick estimate that came awfully naturally for me. We've got some friendly numbers here. Change the 49 and 2 tenths to a 50, and then that times 3 is 150. That was very quick for me to do. So I'll keep that in my estimate box, kind of like a penalty box. It can come out later on. And now we're ready to dive in. So set up your ratio table. We're not sure exactly how many of these slots we're going to need, but we can set up at least one of them right now. And now we need to make a decision. What do we want on top? What do we want on the bottom? First, let's try it with our groups on the top and how many members are in the group on the bottom. So, so far we have one group of 49 and 2 tenths. Well, what would two groups look like? We can double it. Two groups. Doubling the top means I need to double the bottom. So the double of 49 and 2 tenths. See if you can solve that in your head mentally and press pause and then you can come back and check and see if you got it right. Press pause now. Okay, so the double of 49 and 2 tenths, 98 and 4 tenths. Now, we need to get to a group of 3. Right now I have one group, two groups. How can I get three groups? Hey, add these together. One hundred forty seven and six tenths. Now before we box it up as our final answer, we really should check and ask ourselves, does this make sense? And if we look at our estimate of 150, 147 and 6 tenths, yep, pretty darn close. Check. So that's one way of solving this problem. So in this case, we were just kind of counting up the groups to build up to three groups. Let's take a look at a different way of doing it. Now, because of the commutative property, we can flip-flop the factors and know that we're going to get the same answer. So let's change it to three members in a group, but we have 49, not quite 50 groups of three. All right, so let's take a look at what that'll look like here. On our ratio table, what we'll do is we'll say, well, one group of three would be three. Now here, I'm trying to build up to 49 and 2 tenths groups, so I've got a long way to go for this building. But you'll notice that the numbers down here are a lot friendlier than they were the last way that we did it. So let's do our core four, one, two, ten, five. Okay, so hopefully working with these types of groups, I'll get close to my 49 and a little bit more groups that I need. And this is going to be pretty friendly to do in my head. So to get from 1 to 2, I doubled, which means I have to do the same thing to the bottom to keep the proportions the right way or the relationships between these numbers the same. So I can double the 3 and get 6. All right. A group of 10 threes, well, just place a zero, place a zero. 10 groups of three would be 30. And then a group of five threes, I can cut this in half and cut my 30 in half, and I've got 15. So in about 30 seconds, you can do your core four. And now you can take a look and just kind of step back from it a little bit and say, okay, if I need to build up to 49 and 2 tenths groups of 3, meaning somewhere in between 49 groups and 50 groups, 
A little more than 49, definitely not enough to make 50 whole groups. What do I have here that I can use? What is usable here? I could think to myself, well, I could double the 10 and get to 20, double that 20 and get to 40, then I'm getting close to what I need. Or really, since three is such a nice, friendly number to work with and multiply in my head, I should be able to just do 40 groups of three because four times three is 12 and place a zero for 40 times three. So that gets me up to 120. Nice. So now I've got 40, but I'm trying to get to 49 and two tenths. I need a nine somehow. How could I figure out what nine groups of three are? Well, mental math. Nine times three is 27. Ooh, so now I know what my 49 is because I've got 49 right here. What about this two tenths though? How are we gonna figure that out? That seems pretty crazy. Well, I know that I need a group that is not quite one whole group of three. It's two tenths of a group. So I can write that group size up here. Think of it as not quite a whole muffin, but a muffin that's been eaten a lot. Not quite a whole. So two tenths. Where else do we see a two? Ah, right here. It looks like if we divided by a power of 10, we would be moving a decimal. And that's how we got our two tenths. We should be able to do the same thing right here. So if our relationship between our two and our two tenths is basically dividing by a power of 10, we should be able to do the same thing and divide by a power of 10, or in other words, move the decimal over to the left because we're getting less for our six. So it would be six tenths. Now we have everything that we need. To make the 49 and two tenths, I see that I'm gonna need the 40, the nine, and the two tenths, which means I'm going to need to add together those partial products, 120, 27, and six tenths. And I should be able to do that in my head, but I'll use some arrow math to show my thinking. Ta-da, 147 and six tenths just like last time, and just like last night, last time. Does this make sense? Yes, it certainly does. Check. Now take a look at what you have written down for these two different ways of solving. The first way that we looked at had fewer steps but we were having to keep track of decimals the whole way through. This way had a longer ratio table with more steps, but I kind of personally feel like these were very friendly steps, especially this cool trick with the two to the point two and the six to the point six by basically dividing by 10. So it really depends on how your mind works. If you wanna do it with the fewest steps possible, you might have to do some adding off to the side because you're working with some unfriendly decimals. Or if you wanna put your decimals up at the top, you can deal with them in the very, very last step and it can usually be done with mental math. So I personally lean more toward this way, but to each his own, of course. Let's try another one. 34 and 8 tenths times 12. We could also use the commutative property and switch it around to 12 times 34 and 8 tenths. The difference being, this means that I have 34 and 8 tenths 
of Skittles in a group, and I have 12 groups that are that size. This means that I have 12 Skittles in a group, and I have almost 35 groups of the 12. Either way, we should end up with the same answer. And either way, before we start, we need to estimate. Well, I wrote two of them down because they were both really fast to do. I could tweak the 34 and 8 tenths and I could change it to a 30 times 12, or I could tweak it and change it to a 40 times 12. I know that the first is gonna be an underestimate and the second is gonna be an overestimate, which means my answer will be somewhere between 360 and 480. So by doing an underestimate and an overestimate, you can do a double check for does this make sense? Because your answer will need to be between those two numbers. Kind of a cool way of estimating with a double check there. All right, let's set up this ratio table. And like I said before, I like it when my decimals end up up here. That way I'm not having to work with decimals every step of the way along the bottom. So I'm gonna think of this as 12 Skittles in a group and I have not quite 35 groups, 34 and 8 tenths groups. So here we go. One group of 12 would be 12. So up here, I'm trying to build up to 34 and 8 tenths groups, but I'll just start with one. And in fact, I'll do the core four and we can see how fast it can really be. And you'll be able to do this even faster because you're not switching colors and everything. But take a look at how fast that core four can be. One, two, ten, five. One group of 12 is 12. Two groups of 12 make 24. 10 groups, I can look at my fast fact and place zero, 120. Five groups of 12, well, if I don't know my 12's facts very well, what I could do is I could look at this and say, ooh, I can half it, and I can have it here. Half of 120 would be 60. And in fact, five times 12 is 60. So there's my core four. One, two, ten, five. All right, now I can take a step back and see what I've got to work with. Remembering that I'm trying to build up to 34 and 8 tenths groups, it would be really nice if I could get a 30 in here. And since I'm working with a fairly friendly number of 12, that's definitely doable. Three groups of 12 would be 36, so 30 groups of 12 would be 360. If I didn't know my 12's facts very well, there are other ways to get it too. I could triple my 10 to get 30 and triple 120 to get 360. I could also figure out what a group of three would be by adding these together. 12 plus 24 is 36. A group of three is 36, so a group of 30 is 360. So lots of different ways that you could arrive at this answer. But we should know that three times 12 is 300, or is 36, and then place the extra zero. All right, so that got me the 30 that I needed. Now we need a four. Well, a couple of ways to get there. I really like to double and half as much as I can, double two to get four, double 24 to get 48. I also know that four groups of 12 or four times 12 is 48. So we've got lots of solutions there, or lots of strategies to get the solution there. Okay, so I have my 30, I have my four. Oh no, decimals, no, I need a point eight. I don't even see an eight anywhere here. Hmm, if I could get an eight, then I could cheat with decimals and get a point eight. Let's do that. That might be a good strategy. If I don't know that eight times 12 is 96, what can I do? Double, double, and get 96. 
Another thing you could do is you could say, well, 8 is the same as 10 minus 2. So 8 groups of 12 would be the same as 120 minus 24. Lots of different ways to arrive at the answer, but hopefully you know your 12's facts. Now, if I know that 8 groups of 12 make 96, I've got an 8 here. Can I cheat with decimals and powers of 10? Why, certainly. 8 is related to point 0.8 by dividing by 1 power of 10, basically moving that decimal over. So I can basically do the same thing here, divide by a power of 10, move the decimal over, and get 9 and 6 tenths. Now I have what I need. Yes! My target number of groups that I've always been trying to get to and build up to is 34 and 8 tenths. And I have that here, 34 and 8 tenths. So that means that underneath in the ratio table, I will have what I need to add together to find out how many are in those 34 and 8 tenths groups. Almost 35 groups, but not quite. Now we've got some partial products, and all we need to do is add them up. I'm running out of room down below, so I'm going to go above, but you just continue with your notes down below. Let's see. I think I will try arrow language for this again. I really like arrow language. 360 plus, hmm, I think I want to break up this 48 into 40 plus 8. Can you see why? Plus 40 gets me to a nice, friendly number. Yay. Now, I could add 8. And then I could add 9. Look at that, the same answer. Now let's take a look at our, our estimate here. Our estimate said it's going to be between 360 and 480 because we had an underestimate and an overestimate. So let's ask ourselves, does this make sense? Shoop. Yes, and we're all very happy. There is no task for tonight but we will be working more with ratio tables and decimals tomorrow. So if you need to go back and rewatch any parts of the lesson or call up a study buddy and say, hey, what, what was going on there? I don't get it. That can be your task for tonight. All right, see you back in school.